Hi there. Now for this question then, we had to find the tensions in the two strings at A and at C. And as you can see, the tension in A was 43.6 newtons and the tension at C was 789 newtons, both given to three significant figures. So I'll take you slowly through this work solution in case there were any problems, or you might want to fast forward just to uh, speed things up. Okay, so let's just, first of all, put in the forces acting on this beam. So you should find you put in a tension, which goes upwards at A, and a tension at C, which I've called TA and TC. The beam is uniform. It had a mass of 25 kilograms, so the weight, 25 G newtons, is going to act in the middle. So you can see I've put in the measurements here, where we've got 2 meters here and the 0.5 here, 2.5 meters in then, okay? There was also a particle P attached at B with a mass of 60 kilograms, so the weight will act downwards and that's going to be 60 G newtons. So there's my diagram then, first of all showing all the forces acting on the beam. The next thing we need to do then in order to work out the tension in the rope at A, working out TA, is to take moments. It's a good idea to take moments about the point C because the force TC, that tension there, passes through what we would call the pivot, okay, or fulcrum, and it won't occur in the equation because it has no turning effect about the point C. And the best way I always feel to do moments questions is to just get a ruler out in case there are any problems, and then you can put your finger on this point, let's say we call it C, okay, to simulate this point here, and we're gonna be turning about this point. So when it comes to taking moments about the point C, let's just put moments about C in here, okay. It doesn't matter which sense you take, whether you take clockwise or anti-clockwise, but for the first force, this tension here, in A, you can simulate this by pushing in this direction here on the ruler. And the ruler would want to turn in a clockwise sense about your finger here, about the point C. And so it would make sense to have clockwise as the positive sense. Okay? So that's our force TA there, okay? And when we take the moment about C, remember moment is force times the distance to the pivot here, in this case C. So it's going to be TA, okay, let's put TA in there, tension in A, and it's multiplied by the distance. So the distance from that tension to C is going to be a distance of 2.5 across to there, plus another two. That's 4.5 meters. So TA times 4.5. Let's take another force. Let's take the one at B, okay? It doesn't matter which order we do this in. I can simulate that on the ruler here just by pushing downwards, okay? If I push downwards on the ruler at that end, then you'll find that the ruler will still want to turn in a clockwise sense about C. So that's a positive moment. So therefore, we've got plus, and we've got that force, 60G, multiplied by the distance to C, which is 0.5, okay? 0.5 meters there. So we've done that force. Let's do the weight of the beam next, and we can simulate that one just by pushing downwards over here. Okay, now if I push downwards there to simulate that weight, the ruler would want to turn in an anti-clockwise sense about C. So that's going to be negative for its moment. The force will be the weight, 25G, and it's multiplied by the distance back to C, 
which is two, two meters there. As for this force TC, as I say, if you were to try and push through C with your finger held on that point, the ruler wouldn't turn, okay? So this force here has no moment about C. So that's the total moment about C, and we know that the ruler is in equilibrium, so it must equal zero. And it's just a question now of rearranging this and solving it for that tension in A. Well, if you do that, okay, then these are the following steps, okay, that TA turns out to be 43.55 and so on, okay. And I've numbered that equation, as you can see, as one. Okay, so let's move on to part two, where we've got to find the tension now in this other rope here, uh, which I've called TC. And to do this, what you could do, the best thing you could do, is now just to resolve vertically, okay? Consider the resultant force vertically. You could, if you wanted to, take moments about A, but I think that's going to be a lot longer to do, okay? So I'll leave that up to you if you do decide at this point to take moments about A. But I'm going to resolve vertically, okay? So we'll take upwards as positive. And if we do that, we've got the tension at A plus the tension at C minus all the forces acting downwards, a total of 85 G Newtons. And that resultant force must equal zero. I'll just write that in for you, okay? We've got then that the tension at A plus the tension at C minus the two forces down, a total of 85 G, well, that must equal zero because it's in equilibrium. Now, I'm going to call this equation two. And all I've got to do now is substitute the result for the tension in A, which I've called one. Substitute that value into here. Rearrange to get t the tension in C. Well, I've done that for you. Okay, you can see that we end up with at 789 Newtons. Okay, so I hope that's given you some idea then on how to handle that kind of question.